Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now if you've been with me for some time, you'll know that a while ago I embarked on a bit of a journey to investigate or to explore a little bit more about the world of sim racing. Lots of people kept banging on at me about it, saying how great it was, how big it was, and I thought, I need to know a bit more about this. I'd seen it, of course, inside the F1 team, but outside of that, I had no idea just how big an industry it was. I started out by buying myself a play seat. Uh, Logitech very kindly gave me a set of pedals and a steering wheel, which got me going. It was the first rung on the ladder, but I will always be eternally grateful for them giving me that little helping hand. It was amazing. Since then, you'll have seen that I have, well, I've gone up a level massively when I discovered the world of Fanatec kit. Uh, and this stuff I have now, which I'm sure you'll have seen in the video I did recently, is a game changer. But one of the things I wanted to give myself the opportunity to investigate further and try is a new rig. Because the one thing that this particular setup has that wasn't intended is its own DAS system. <laughs> Look at that, the flex on this, I mean it's almost comical. Now I'm not going to use that as an excuse for poor lap times, but it definitely and clearly can have an impact on just how precise you can be, how accurate you can be with the inputs around the steering wheel. It's exactly the same at the other end with the pedals. So I started looking at what rigs are available, what's out there in the world, and of course it's a minefield, there is so much stuff, but I need something that's going to be a little bit attractive, but not too bulky, not too big, something that I can move out the way when necessary. This is a, a kind of spare room in my house, it's not something that I can leave this set up in all the time. The play seat's been great for that. It folds away, it's not too big and bulky, it can compress into something quite small, and I can slide it away into a corner. So when I started looking around the same time, I actually noticed a company, I actually found them on Instagram, called the Frenchie Company. And they were coming up, there was a, a crowdfunded idea for a new sim racing rig. I thought it looked really interesting because it was different to most other things I'd seen. Now, completely from coincidence and nothing else, they got in touch with me and offered to send me one. This is the Speed Cockpit. Now, first up, I must just say, I'm not being paid to make this video, however, they did send it to me for free as a gift, but I'm completely free to be totally honest and draw my own conclusions and say whatever I want about it. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say is that I think it looks great. This is an aesthetically pleasing simulator rig or gaming seat, much more so than what I've been used to before, to the point where Mrs. Priestley, who runs an interiors business, actually doesn't hate it. And I can tell you that's a giant leap forward from where we were before. It comes in this nice, simple and clean matte black finish on this lovely polished piece of engineered wood, which doesn't look out of place inside a home, which of course is what most people are gonna be doing with these things. They are not professional bits of kit that are gonna be used in industry. They are going to fit into people's homes. So do we really want something that looks industrial made out of great big chunks of extruded aluminium box section. Personally, I don't. The second thing is that cushions are medium and high density foam. They're all contoured in ergonomically profiled ways that fit the profile and the contours of your own back. It's comfortable, which is of course what it should be because a lot of people will be spending a lot of time in this. And just look at the situation that I'm in. The position feels much more like I'm driving a racing car. And that, of course, is the whole point of these simulations. It's to simulate you being in the vehicle that you're driving on the screen, to make it a much more immersive experience. Already, this for me feels completely different to what I was used to with that old play seat, which was much more sitting upright, much more like a, a GT car or even a road car type seating position. This feels like a Formula One car. And the other thing to say about this is, very, very quickly, this is adjustable into a number of different seating positions. Within probably 20 or 30 seconds, with a very quick adjustment of the tension strap that runs between front and rear here, you can adjust the position of the backrest 
and the pedal situation to be much more like a, a GT car or whatever it is you're driving in the game. That I think is a really clever touch. And then perhaps the biggest thing of all that jumps out at me even just as soon as you get in this from where I was before is the rigidity of it. Now I've been in a number of different sim rigs over the years, as I said most of them much more industrial looking, big chunky uh, box sections running down either side and yes you get zero flex in that. This though is done in a much more pleasing, aesthetically pleasing way and still we've got no flex. I am pushing as hard as I dare on this thing without wanting to snap the wheel and I cannot move it. No exaggeration, there is almost zero flex in there. In fact, there might even be more flex in the actual Fanatec wheel than there is in the rig itself. That's quite incredible from what it looks like. And on the pedal end, it's perhaps even better. It feels like you're pushing against a solid brick wall, which is exactly what you should be doing with the brake pedal on these things. Since I've moved to a load cell brake pedal with this Fanatec gear, one of the biggest issues with that was fighting against the flex on my old rig. So being accurate and precise with the inputs through the brake pedal particularly was one of the things that I found I had to compensate for the rig. Now I don't have to do that. Now I can put my effort through my left leg and whatever effort I put in goes straight through the pedal, straight through the load cell and therefore will affect the car in the game. I mean it's perfect. It is a bit longer so the whole thing front to rear is longer than I had before however having said that removing a couple of bolts from the steering uh, wheel base will allow you to drop that forward and fold the whole thing down so it will allow itself to collapse a little bit if you need to store it. It also comes with all of the holes pre-drilled in both the wheel base and the pedal base to take almost all of the common sim racing setups. It didn't take me long to put this together and it was really, really simple and really easy. You can tell what they have done is spent a lot of time working out the details, the finer details of this, of how it will look, how it will operate. How can they remove this flex but still keep it looking smart, nice, stylish, one of the things I like about this is when you go onto the website, there's actually a number of options that you can have. I mean, this is a fairly basic standard setup here, but there are various options. You can have carbon fiber inserts into uh, the seat. You can have the seat made in leather. So what does it all cost? Well, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, naturally, but if you consider what you're getting for it, my actual opinion on this is that it's really good value for money. I mean, this thing will cost you, in this configuration, obviously without the wheel and pedals, will cost you 598 US dollars. That's about 450 British pounds. That's a lot of money. That's just shy of being double what my PlaySeat rig before this one cost in the first place. But really, you can't compare those two because they are completely different and are on a completely different level. I guess if you go onto the play seat range and look at what might be comparable to this, the Formula play seat, the Formula Ultimate Edition, which is the one that sits down in racing car in Formula One style position with zero flex in their rig, well that thing will cost you £2,000. Now when you look at it like that, this all of a sudden becomes incredible value for money. And that's generally where I sit on this. Yes, you could spend a bit less and you could get something that's probably quite good. But this is about the best rig that I have ever used outside of something hugely industrial and highly professional and probably a lot more expensive. Certainly not something that wouldn't look out of place inside your home, in a spare bedroom, wherever it is you do your sim racing. I've got to say, I absolutely love it. <laughs> absolutely love it. Oh, and I've got to say thank you so much for the personal touch on the headrest. Unbelievable.